Well, there are many challenges in treating neuroendocrine tumors because I think uh, there's little that we really know about these patients, although the information is suddenly exploding in the last decade or so. Uh, but I think uh, the challenges for therapy, one of the big ones is that there is no two patients are the same, and so each therapy really does need to be individualized. I think another challenge is that many different disciplines approach these diseases in very different ways, and there is no true algorithm for management. Uh, and the good old adage, if you've got a hammer, everything looks like a nail, uh, really is true in this disease. So if you happen to be a, a, a radiation oncologist, uh, you seem to, seem to think that radiation is a great way to go. And if you're a surgeon, you think that surgery is a great way to go. And if you're an oncologist, you think maybe chemotherapy is the right way to go. But each patient has different ways to be treated. And so I think the challenge is to have a good multidisciplinary approach and a good tumor board where all these disciplines can come together and individualize therapy for Mrs. Smith. Another big challenge in management is that uh, some patients may not need aggressive therapy and other patients need very aggressive therapy. So uh, that's very difficult to sort out. We know from the pathological diagnosis that it's important to get a stage, and it's important to get a grade and a differentiation. So well differentiated low grade tumors uh, fall into two categories. Some do well and some do badly and we have no way of knowing the difference between that. So it's easy if you get a aggressive rapidly turning over a widespread stage 4 tumor you know how to treat that on the whole. But if you get a small uh, low grade lesion that may or may not have one or two lymph nodes associated with it there are many different ways to skin the cat uh, that can go from doing very little to being very very aggressive. Uh, I think another challenge of, in terms of managing these patients uh, is the consequences of our therapy. Because these are long, slow-growing tumors, people live with their disease for a long time. So as time goes on, if we're too aggressive in our management, we can end up hurting the patient rather than helping the patient. And as a gastroenterologist, I see a lot of this. So you see pancreatic insufficiency from pancreatic resections or from uh, treatment with somatostatin analogs and those need enzyme replacement. You can get vitamin B12 deficiency, for example, if you've had a terminal ileal resection. Same with the fat soluble vitamin absorption. Uh, there are adhesions and obstructions that come into play that we need to deal with in terms of abdominal pain. Not all diarrhea is the carcinoid syndrome and in fact bile salt diarrhea, bacterial overgrowth as a cause of diarrhea. Uh, is very common. So I think another challenge is to be able to manage the patient in the light of all the treatment that has happened before. Um, so there are many, many challenges. I think uh, from a basic science perspective, uh, there's a, another very important problem is that we really don't understand the origin of these tumors. They occur in all sorts of places in the body. They seem to not all behave exactly the same way in terms of potential response to therapy, which is interesting. Um, they may look the same under the microscope, but one makes a product and another one doesn't. They arise in the small bowel, they don't respond as well to chemotherapy, they arrive in the pancreas, they do. So those sort of things are very, very difficult to understand. Uh, diagnostic markers, I think, is another real, real challenge. We have no real good non-invasive marker tests to prove a neuroendocrine tumor one way or another. Uh, and what is available isn't very accurate and may cause us to over-investigate some patients. We don't have a good prognostic indicator of how patients are going to do once they've gotten into some kind of treatment regimen. Uh, another big challenge is in terms of monitoring progression of tumors. Uh, in, in other solid malignancies, resist criteria work very well, but in this particular disease where tumors are very slow growing and take a long time to change, it's hard to be sure that your therapy is really helping or not. Uh, there is, I think in my opinion, probably the biggest difficulty right now is to come up with an appropriate algorithm for managing patients in terms of the primary location and extent of disease. And so you'd think that if you had a, you know, a primary in one place with, with so many lymph nodes that you'd go to surgery and if the surgery showed the following, you'd do th put this drug on board next and if it showed this, you'd put that drug on board next. We don't really know that. And at the moment we have great difficulty, especially I can see it coming 
with PRRT is, is PRRT something that should be early or is it something that should be late? Uh, our own data from the University of Pennsylvania suggests maybe it's better early. I'm not sure that our oncolo oncologic uh, colleagues are going to be all very comfortable with that. So there's many different uh, issues going on right now and uh, that's why it's an exciting area to be working in.